Could Lisa's newest music video be the biggest and best representation for Southeast Asians on a global pop scale ever? Let's talk about it. I think Lisa is even bigger than Raya. Let's run the clips. Coachella! <laughs> Coachella! Oh, really, I'm not going to die. I'm not going to die. I'm not going to die. Because it's a special event. Boom! There it is, guys. What appears to be the highest budget Southeast Asian pop global hit, potentially, Andrew, in world history. I guess we'll find out, guys. Obviously, you guys know Lisa from Blackpink. Maybe a lot better than we do. She is globally considered the most popular member of Blackpink. But uh, basically, I think with this music video coming out, which involves a lot of uh, Bangkok and Thailand, like imagery and stuff like that, a lot of people are wondering, like, yo, is she really going to put Southeast Asians on the map with this one? Is this the beginning of something global? Please hit the like button, subscribe, turn on your notifications. Check out Smile Last Sauce at SmileLastSauce.com. We got this comment that said, hey, Fung Bros, I just saw Lisa. I'm a rock star teaser. Her tan skin really made me feel representative because I'm a dark-skinned Southeast Asian. I thought this may be good topic to talk about. And guess what, Andrew? We wouldn't be the first people. Uh, this wouldn't be the first time it's been discussed on the internet. Right. So let's like take a look at this title. Hey, Southeast Asians exist. Please stop invalidating our lived experiences. This is referencing a song of, from SKZ. Understanding the Asian American divide concerning Southeast Asians and East Asians. This one was a little bit more about representation. Saying, it's no secret that East Asians are commonly considered higher class and upwardly mobile, while Southeast Asians are stereotyped as domestic workers or gang members. But why? Uh, by the way, that was from like eight, nine years ago. I think the stereotypes have changed a little bit since then. Um, but yeah, let's just talk about it, Andrew. Do you think right off the bat, this is the high, this is going to be the biggest global Southeast Asian music hit in, in uh, world history? I, I think, I, d I don't know, but obviously Lisa being one of the biggest stars in the globe, um, she and she has always represented for her Thai roots. You know, she's fluent in English, Thai, and Korean. Um, so obviously that helped her grab a very global fan base. Obviously her features look a little bit different than a lot of the Korean, uh, other Korean band members and, and, and Korean pop stars. And you know what's interesting, stars. Andrew? She even looks different than the Thai beauty standard because she is from South Thailand, which more borders the Austronesian countries like uh, Cambodia. Right. And more, that's why some people think that she almost is like a mix of all the Asians. Yeah, 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 for sure. And I think that... She has always been a good representation for Southeast Asians, especially in that K-pop world where there is not a lot, right? I mean, most people are Korean, but obviously there's a lot of, there's non-Korean performers now, you know. But they speak Korean, Chinese. right? Yeah, or they are they're Korean passing. I would say Lisa has always been non-Korean passing, and that is why she always represented because she, you don't, visually think she's Korean. And I think a big thing too is her being from Thailand. That's like a whole different cultural sphere mm -hmm. than East Asia. So let me just get into this real quick and break this down for people so people can even understand before we get into our list about why Lisa is representing for Southeast Asians. Andrew, here are the four main types of Asians. You have Altaic Asians. Uh, they split into Western and Eastern Altaic, which is more of like a, you know, Asian Asian look. It's like very, very Eskimo-like. And uh, boom, Andrew, there's this group right here. We're going to play a clip from them real quick that you like. <laughs> boom. Okay, then you get into your East Asians, but it sort of splits into two groups, Andrew. You have Chinese on the Western East Asians mm -hmm. and on the East East Asian side, you have Korean and Japanese. Now, I would say of 100% pie of Asian representation between Korea and Japan, they have about 75%. Mm -hmm. Maybe 15% goes to China and then 15% for everybody else or 10% left, I'm sorry, mathematically. Then you've got Thai Kadai, Craw Dai, which is more what Lisa is representing. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you've got Austronesian with a slight Melanesian component in there. That would be Indonesian Filipino. Right. So let's be clear here. Of that, Andrew, type number two, the East Asian, would you say that that section gets by far the most global representation? Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure, especially the K-pop 
um, pretty much most K-pop singers and K-pop stars, they represent that look. Most of them, even if they're not Korean, they are Korean passing. They probably fall within the tier two. Right, right, right. And even of the tier two, Chinese got to take a backseat to Japanese and Koreans, but maybe even Koreans number one. So that means, Andrew, there's only 10% visibility to be split amongst literally 15 other countries. We're talking about Vietnam, Laos, Thailand, Burma, Cambodia, Malaysia, Indonesia, Singapore, Brunei, East Timor, Philippines, and we're not even getting into the Himalayas, Nepal, Paul, Bhutan, uh, there are mongoloid parts of India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Central Asians like Kazakhs, you got Siberians and Russias, Mongolians, you know what I mean? Um, different places like that. So basically, it's like, I guess what I'm saying is, I just want to illustrate for people how rare it is for this region of the world to get a big budget global hit. Mm -hmm. Because most of the music out here Andrew, stays within the domestic market. Right. right. So point, this is a... Four ways how Lisa represents a lot of interesting Asian dynamics for Southeast Asians. Um, this is pulled from the internet, by the way. Point number one, Andrew. Do you think that Southeast Asians with their slightly bigger eyes and slightly more Western look to their face may fit into Eurocentric beauty standards better than K-pop idols? Or is this false equivalency? Uh, I think that there are a lot of different types of Southeast Asians. Obviously, there are ones that even look more Altaic or East Asian, you would say, because maybe they have East Asian blood or just because people do look different in different parts of the world. Um, I would say yes overall, though, that Lisa has round eyes and she has considered tanner skin. Uh, potentially, she could be mistaken for a multitude of different ethnicities being Indonesian, Filipino, Thai. I mean, I think somewhere you could say, oh, is she like part indigenous Native American or South American? Uh, even that, you could make an argument. Right. I actually think that, like, if you look at Mongoloid people, I actually don't think that they're that different from each other. But you know what I realized, Andrew? The look standards in each of the countries are very different. And I actually think it's possible that the mainstream look standards in Southeast Asia more align with the West Whereas in East Asia, they like something that's like very different from the West. Mm. Like, I think they might more like even in their mainstream have more crossover. Whereas like East Asians, it's almost like, um, have you ever seen that one meme where the girl's like, I'm a six in China, but I'm a 10 in Canada because she has a very westernized look. Right. Um, yeah. And I think that there's a lot of different cultural spheres. So if you look at East Asia, it's kind of like the Sinosphere, right? And then it's a lot of like cold weather influences. In the Southeast Asia, you've got the Indiosphere, the Sinosphere, uh, more of a tropical sphere, and French, Dutch, Spanish colonization. So basically what I'm saying is that is just, once there's different ancient spheres of influence, it does manifest itself in different modern culture. Right. Point number two. From an American standpoint, Southeast Asian pop culture more fits with black and Latino culture than East Asian culture does. Yeah, I would say so. Uh, what you know as Southeast Asian culture uh, probably tends to be, and especially if you take trips to Southeast Asia, for the most part, especially Thailand, it's a little bit more laid back. Uh, people know how to have fun. They know how to dance. Uh, you could say that they outwardly act a little sexier, a little spicier. Uh, they do very brutal martial arts. Free-spirited. Yeah, a, a lot of people are learning Muay Thai. They're a little bit more free-spirited. Um, yeah, just more like fun, having that fun attitude, you know? And I do think that comes along with the weather and the climate. Uh, obviously, in the cold weather, people tend to dance less. I don't know. I, that's, that's what it seems like. But I guess that... Uh, to a Western audience, someone like Lisa, the way she acts, a little bit more badass, a little bit more like smiley, um, and maybe- And it you seems, could, feels more like an organic smiley, yeah, right? Yeah. Like it's not like you didn't have to train to yeah, be smiley. she seems legitimate, like uh, if you consider her sultry or cute or sexy. Soulful. Seems legit. Soulful. See, yes. She I seems would like say for soulful. me, like I haven't heard the full song of I'm a Rockstar yet, but I'm more likely to watch- a Lisa video now that she's gone solo and has her own record label, uh, like her, one of these videos all the way through than an actual like Asian K-pop video right. or something that's like feels very East Asian to me. Right. Despite right. being East Asian, when it comes to music, I more like that like badass style. Mm. 
Yeah, I mean, that's just like what appeals to me. And I do think that there's certain looks that allow you to get away with acting a certain way too. Like just in the mind, it's almost like a, a car that has like aggressive body styling with a loud engine, everything yeah, like yeah, just Yeah, yeah, it sells it. I mean, listen, she's got like uh, Thai gangsters or tattoo artists in the video. It looks edgy. That's only something you would really see from like Asian rappers. Like Ko in Japan has that imagery, but he's like a rapper, you know what I mean? And Lisa he's coming not mainstream. Uh, yeah, I, I don't. He's think like that, a main. Maybe he's like a rapper mainstream. You know, I don't know exactly where he stands in the Japanese hip hop. I mean, but he he seems like a he's a strictly a rapper. So Lisa, this video comes off as very hip hop in that way. Hip you know? hop. Well, it's like kind of mixed with the pop music, but like you said, a lot of almost like rap imagery. Andrew, you'd more see in a titanium yeah, yeah, yeah. video. But, but but she's actually just trying to show how it's different than Korea. Like if she wanted to make a statement and be like, hey guys, my homeland is different than South Korea and it's because of this. And she's going to show like people smashing a papaya salad, gangsters with tattoos or, you know, serious dudes with tattoos and things like that. Right, right, right. And we, they just want to represent their culture and not feel like, oh, just because our country is not as rich on a GDP per capita basis, we we don't have, to, we, we just trying to represent what we got. Point number three, Andrew, Lisa is the primary Southeast Asian representative to the K-pop world. Obviously, over the past couple de decades, the K-pop world has gone global, global. Yeah, and there are other, uh, I think, artists in the K-pop world that are of Southeast Asian descent, but Lisa's the biggest. And her being from Thailand, I think it makes sense because, like, uh, everybody loves visiting Thailand. That's a heavily tourist, uh, heavily well-known. That's like, I would say Thailand in a way is kind of like the prototypical Southeast Asian country. When you think of Southeast Asia, people are thinking of Thailand because so many people have gone, so many people have eaten Thai food. It's the most popular to visit right. and to consume from. And would you also say Bali too? Bali and Indonesia. Okay, Bali. Bali almost having a Thai-like vibe, but yes, in yes, Indonesia. Yes, yes, yes. Bali, probably a lot of people mistaken Bali as part of Thailand. But yes, Bangkok having such a global brand name. Yeah, and I think that, like you said, for anybody that's like felt like they either didn't fit this like hyper narrow Korean or Northeast Asian beauty standard or people who didn't feel like they wanted to act like that, Lisa was their representation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that she does act like a little bit edgier because she's like the rapper of the group, so she kind of she gets to play with that image. But I think that's authentically her, and I think she pulled it off so authentically, and that's why people dig it. You yeah, know? I believe prior to Lisa in the previous phase or like generation of K-pop stars, there was a girl from Guangzhou who used to have that same cultural spacing within the K-pop world. Guangzhou, Southern China. Yeah, Guangzhou gets gully too, to be honest. Uh, point number four. Lisa's cultural space in relation to Koreans changing dependence on who's looking at it. Yeah, so this is kind of like saying that, you know, she is globally considered the most popular. But I know that- million, right? Yeah, on but there's a lot of uh, posts about why, how come Korean, and maybe they were posted by non-Koreans, but they were like wondering, a lot of posts have asked like, hey, are K-pop fans- angry with Lisa? Do they like her? And obviously because Lisa's from a different place, she doesn't look, fit the bill. Maybe she acts like a bad girl and there's some sense like, no, she's kind of the bad girl of the group. Don't act like that in Korea, you know. The bad Southeast Asian girl. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, I think that was some of the dynamic um, for sure. And right, because so, they prefer Jisoo, right? Yeah, yeah, but it's funny because in, in, in maybe East Asia or in Korea, that's how she's viewed, but maybe in different parts of Asia, she's viewed differently and that's why people like her so much. Right, right, right. And by the way, guys, I do think that there's a difference between Asia and Asian America, the journey of each group and like what it looks like. But it's like, I guess the situation holds true whether we're in Asian America or Asian uh, Asia, Asia, that East Asians and particularly Japanese and Koreans make up the bulk of the representation. I think right. in Asian America, Chinese might make up like, 40% of it or whatever like that, just due to the numbers. But in terms of globally exported Asian soft power, it is mostly Japan and Korea. And now Thailand getting in there. Right, right, right. Um, honestly, here's my major takeaways. I think it's dope to see Lisa have this arc. Obviously her solo career is more driven on an independent level. That's why she can incorporate more of this iconography or like sort of like things that are affiliated with Thailand without like being like, oh, this is going to jeopardize Blackpink's image. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I wonder for, I guess, people out there seeing like the guys with tattoos, 
Do you feel like that represents Southeast Asia? Is that a marking of Southeast Asia? Asian, because like in Japan, if you show a bunch of guys with tattoos in suits, the connotation is that they're like gangsters, Yakuza, right? Um, although although Yakuza is a big part of Japan, it is still kind of like frowned upon in the public sphere, right? But I guess like in Thailand, how do people feel like if you're a fancy Southeast Asian, are you like, hey, I, I didn't think black, I didn't think Lisa needed to show this kind of imagery or it's like, yeah, that's real. So that's the real stuff. That's what makes Thailand, Thailand, you know? I mean, I just know that Lisa has always acted a little differently. Like here's her eating home cooked Thai food out of her Spotify, Spotify, like billionaire, uh, billion playlist plate. And I thought that that was just something that like, is so Lisa to do, you know what I mean? Like right. not, maybe other K-pop artists wouldn't have done that. For sure. I think it's really dope to show the diversity of Asians, you know? And I think that that's what's going to allow us to have, you know, a multitude of things. And it's almost like, yeah, it, it, dude, it's so like, I'll tell you this. For America, sometimes in certain aspects, the, a more Southeast Asian attitude is better to have. Because I think East Asians sometimes are too deferent to authority, maybe too risk adverse, too cautious, maybe a little social awkward. So the Southeast Asian side is going to like be more badass and be more like, you know, feel comfortable taking up space in the room and maybe feeling like, yeah, this is our new homeland. Let's not feel like perpetual foreign guests forever. Mm -hmm. So listen, guys, I mean, these are generalizations, but you get what I mean. Let me know what you guys think of Lisa's new music video in the comment section below. And what does it mean for global Southeast Asian representation? Is there a link between Asia, Asia and Asian America? Until next time, we the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.